So you, me, and this user on TikTok have all noticed something weird and frustrating about ChatGPT and its ability to code, or more precisely, its ability to fix some code. So let's imagine this scenario. You ask it to write a scraping script in Python, and it does it with the confidence of Kanye West. I always felt like I could do anything. So you feel happy because you have a script in less than one minute. But then you run the code and you realize that it has a lot of errors. Okay, okay, okay. You can fix it easily, it's not a problem. You just have to copy paste the errors into your chat and ChatGPT will tell you what's wrong. Well, not really. Most likely you'll end up running into more errors and then you'll end up feeling very frustrated and confused. Turns out that ChatGPT isn't really that great at fixing code, especially not code that it previously generated. But I believe that I found a solution in this research paper that was published just a few days ago called the Mystifying GPT Self-Repair for Code Generation. Paper that analyzes the effectiveness of self-repair in code generation using GPT-3 and GPT-4 models on a challenging dataset called apps. These are difficult coding challenges that are something you might run into when you do a professional software engineering interview or a competition. But before that, I just want to remind you that a lot of time goes into making these videos. And if you enjoy watching them, please don't forget to like and leave a comment or subscribe to my channel because it definitely helps small creators like me. So let's dive in. These are two things that the researchers were looking at. LLM's ability to generate code and LLM's ability to identify what's wrong with the generated code. And in order to test these capacities, they use a framework that they called a repair tree. And here's what this process looks like. So it all starts with the user's one-shot prompt, which is basically a user prompt together with a systems prompt and a few examples of how to successfully solve a problem. Then the model GPT 3.5 or GPT 4 would then generate some code. Researchers would test the code and in case they found some errors, they would provide those errors back to the model and ask for feedback. In the next step, they would put feedback back into the model and ask it to fix the code. And lastly, they would would test the new version of the code and check if it successfully fixed the code or not. Here are the conclusions of the test. Unfortunately, the earlier GPT 3.5 model isn't capable of self-repair. On the other hand, GPT 4 was able to improve code after the self-repair process, but the improvements were very, very modest. The success rate jumped from 66%, which is the success rate of the generated code in step one, to only 71% after the process of self-repair. So why are the results so disappointing? The authors explained that the problems arise from something being called a bottleneck by the feedback stage. Essentially, when you run a code with bugs, the error messages that you get are usually very high level, so the generated feedback simply cannot be accurate enough Hence, the feedback stage is a limiting factor, particularly for GPT 3.5 model, because the model simply doesn't understand very well what went wrong based on these error messages. And to expand on this topic, I found another similar research written by different authors and published a little over a month ago. But instead of self-repair, the authors used the word iterative refinement. Their views of GPT 3.5 and GPT 4's debugging capacities are almost identical, but in addition, they have also experimented with Vicuña 13 billion parameters, and their conclusion is that although Vicuña is good at step one, which is to generate code, it struggles with providing you useful feedback, hence it's also not capable of self-repair. So what to do about this? Since ChatGPT and Vancunia are not that great and figuring out why the code doesn't work, the authors suggest these three things. First, don't try to fix your code with GPT 3.5 because you're probably wasting your time. Instead, generate multiple code snippets from one prompt and one of them will probably be free of bugs. The second solution would be to generate code with GPT 3.5 and then ask GPT 4 to provide feedback. It increased success from 50 to 54%. And lastly, just find a professional programmer. So the best improvements came when a human programmer stepped in to provide a feedback 
compared to GPT-4, which significantly boosted the, the number of successful repairs, resulting in 57% increase. Authors believe that there are three reasons why programmers are much better than GPT-4 at fixing code. So first of all, professional programmers in general gave more accurate feedback, or in other words, they were better at figuring out what the error is. And programmers were also more creative when it comes to solving the problem. They were inclined to suggest more complicated, high-level changes to the code, whereas GPT-4 had the tendency to suggest small changes to the generated code. And the last and the funniest reason is that programmers expressed uncertainty 7 out of 80 times, whereas GPT-4 never does. As most of you noticed, GPT-4 is going to give you an inaccurate answer with incredible confidence, which makes it hard for the user to establish what the error is. So as always, thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new and have a good one.